much anymore, man. Just swiping right. Oh, man. Uh, uh, let's bring in uh, <laughs> River Island's guest line. Double clicking the like Double button. Click. It spats out out of nowhere in the Uber. It was crazy. Crazy. All right. Shaska, you remember this guy. Uh, and I remember when I used to have a Sports Illustrated subscription. Uh, this man was player of the year as a sophomore uh, on the cover of Sports Illustrated. He was a super sophomore, according to Dick Vitale, in this double overtime classic at Cameron Indoor Stadium against Duke University. With, remember, uh, 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 what's my guy's name? Uh, Capel. Uh, Capel. Jeff Capel. Hit the half-court shot, mm-hmm. sent it to overtime to go to the double over Team North Carolina. Ends up winning 102 to 100. But this play right here stole the show in regulation. I can't believe, man, that was in 1995. We're getting old, Chasky. We're Bronte, getting old. I wanted the Warriors to draft him or Sheed in that draft. So I know they went with Joe Smith, and yeah. he had a good rookie year, but that's who I wanted. I mean, I love Jerry Stackhouse, number three overall pick in 1995, and now he's the assistant coach with the Go to State Warriors alongside Terry Stotts. They're going to work next to Steve Curran. They're on, and Jerry Stackhouse, what do you know? He's on a River Island's guest line right now. Stack, what's happening, man? Bonte Hill, Joe Shasky, 95-7 the game. How you doing this morning? Man, I'm great, man. Man, that's 30 years ago, man. Y'all still got that kind of memory? Oh, my gosh. I, I swear <laughs> to God, that's when I started loving North Carolina. It was you and Sheen as super sophomores. I wanted you guys to win the national championship so bad. I remember the first round, maybe the second round against Iowa State. You guys had to play without Rashid Wallace. He had an ankle injury, and you guys just you guys are down like 16 early in the game, and you guys just came back and rolled. I remember that team like it was nothing, man. You were awesome, Stack. I mean, I can't believe you're coaching man, now. I appreciate it. Man, no, that was that was a Surrey's wicked game. Surrey stepped up big time in she's absence. Uh, she that uh, ankle injury right there hurt us a little bit in the final four, but man, we were still able to get there. Nah, you, you guys were loaded with Dean Smith and company. Go ahead. Shasky. Why did you wear forty two? I always wanted to ask that question because for you know for a guard, it just wasn't. It's not one of the numbers that pops in your head. So I'm always curious why why forty two. Yeah, it was a couple of different reasons. I was just uh, I grew to knew you know more about the number and, and Jackie Robinson and you know that and his legacy and what, what he meant to you know all athletes. But I mean, originally I was just a, a big Laker James Worthy fan, mm, wow. and I, you know, and that was kind of my, that position that I played. I was more thought of more before it when I was coming up. I mean, I was like six. Five, six, four, and in the eighth grade, I thought I was going to be a seven footer. So I wound up being growing much more and wound up being a guard, but I just stuck with that, with that 42. Makes sense because Worthy played in North Carolina. Yeah, You're from totally. North Carolina. They win the national championship. And of course, you end up attending North Carolina. And of course, you were a two time All Star, had a long NBA career, but now you're a coach. And you're coaching with the Golden State Warriors. And you got Steph Curry. You have Draymond Green. You got the banners up here. I always wondered what got you into coaching because you did a great job at Vanderbilt. Obviously, you traveled to Toronto and Memphis. You coached the G League team. What got Jerry Stackhouse into coaching? Man, it's crazy. I was, I was actually. Um, going to watch my son when he was probably like in the seventh or eighth grade, and I was still playing. And I was just, uh, you know, I was just saw they were just rolling the balls out there to him. I was like, man, these these kids at the age where they could really kind of learn the game a little bit more. So I got invested in it. So I really started in, in grassroots uh, basketball with, with my son, and then from that, um, once I, I got an AAU program, and um, Brandon Ingram from my hometown. Um, his dad reached out to him to, to me about him playing with me, and from that we kind of uh, got a, a sponsorship from Adidas. Adidas asked me to take a team over to Treviso for the for the Euro Camp, and there, there I was in front of some, you know, a lot of GMs and coaches coaching. And um, uh, Masai Ujiri reached out. He wanted to add more of a, uh, a player perspective to 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 the coaching staff, and and the rest is kind of history, man. A year after that, on being on Dwayne Casey's staff, mm. um, I was in charge of the, the G League team. We won a championship, went back to the finals um, the, the second year. So I guess people said he might know a little bit about coaching basketball, and from that, here, here I am, man. So I'm a, it's been a, a kind of an unexpected journey. I, if you asked me when I was playing that I was I ever going to be a coach, I would have been like, hell no. But <laughs> no, but I, but, but, but I love it, man. I love being able to give back, being able to share all of the, you know, the things that I've learned from the great coaches and the great players that I played with and now being able to impart that with, you know, being able to come in here and, you know, get under the hood of a, you know, a dynasty. You know, so I mean, I couldn't pass up that opportunity.
opportunity, man, when, when they reached out. So I'm, I'm excited as hell to be here. Yeah, D-League Coach of the Year, Shasky Champion, and the SEC Coach of the Year 2023 with Vanderbilt. Wow. That was some accolades. You, you brought up AAU. And, you know, I don't know, when we were coming up, it was different. You played for your park. You played for your school or whatever. And there might have been one Hold AAU on, one team. Hold on, he accidentally hung up. He'll call right back. He'll oh. call right back. Oh. He'll call right back. Well, I was going to ask him about the AAU circuit because, like, you just see a lot of rhetoric about American basketball. And I think baseball falls into this same category right now currently where there's this obsession with tournaments and games and accolades right. and and winning every weekend. It's like, I got right. to win every weekend. Got to yeah. win every weekend. And there's not the same emphasis on development, right, and fundamentals. All right, Jerry's back with us. It, you, you, you did AAU for a while, and I'm just curious your perspective on this. Like, I, I'm a big believer in, like, developing young players and learning how to play the game. And, and, yeah, it's great to play a lot of games, but it doesn't matter if you win a tournament in Atlanta or in Phoenix or whatever every weekend. Like, are you getting better are you learning the intricacies of how to play within a five-man unit and things like that when you watch the AAU game as a guy who played on the highest level and now with all the coaching experience that you have what's what's right about AAU and what's wrong about AAU right now because there are people doing it the right way it just it feels like there's they're few and far between man you're, you're speaking the gospel right now I mean I think that's that's the key just being able to to teach guys how to, you know, even at, in college or even early early professionals, learning how to share the floor with other good players. I mean, I think most guys just don't realize that, you know, you're probably not going to be the man as soon as you step on a college campus or you step into a professional environment. You got to be able to learn how to, you know, kind of kind of fit in and play the game, learn the nuances of the game. And I think that, like you said, there's some some you know programs that do it right, but the the ones that that don't do it right, give these guys, a, you know, give, give the ones that are doing it right a bad name. But overall, I do think that it, it has its purpose. Um, you know, most of these, these foreign countries, they have development programs built in for these guys that have a, a knack of being able to maybe play as a professional. We don't really have anything like that in the, in the U.S. I mean, you're starting to see it a little bit more with the OTs and, um, you know, the G League at night when they were around. But now I think, you you, you know, that there's still some programs, man, that really try to get in these kids, make sure that they're on, you know, on par with what they're doing academically as well as, you know, not trying to play every single weekend, play every tournament, but playing the right tournaments and, and obviously teach the game the right way. And, and but so I, I do think there are some, some programs that are trying to do it the right way. Jerry Stackhouse here on the River Islands Guest Line. Don't forget, you could get tickets today. Warrior fans, yesterday, they started tickets for season ticket holders at 10 a.m. yesterday. Dub Club members as well. Well, today, today, Warriors Insiders will have access to pre-sale tickets starting at 10 a.m. With tickets being av- becoming available to the general public at 4 p.m. Fans will also have the opportunity to purchase an exclusive Warriors NBA Cup mini plan beginning today at 2 p.m. The plan includes tickets to all Warriors NBA Cup games at Chase Center, including the matchups against Dallas Mavericks, a marquee matchup November the 12th. Clay Thompson coming back, and of course, John Morant, the Memphis Grizzlies, number 15th, as well as a home opener against the Clippers, October 27th. Go to warriors.com slash mini plans for that stack. What is your role going to be here on the Warriors team? You know, they have offensive coordinators, defense coordinators. You know, Terry Stotts is a great offensive mind. What is going to be your role here with the Golden State Warriors on this bench? Well, I, mean, I still think we're, you know, a lot of that. I mean, when I was talking to Steve and I was talking to, to Mike, it was, you know, more about trying to get some help on the defensive side of the ball as well as just kind of, again, having a, a former player with so many young guys. Um, and you know, obviously, I've just coming from an environment for the last five years where I've been, you know, really close and tied into this, you know, this Generation Z. You know, yeah, yeah. They're, 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 they're a little different. They're, <laughs> I mean, not in a bad way. They're just a little different. And I think being able to have that experience the last five, you know, five plus years, obviously, the, you know, the grassroots stuff as well. Um, just, you know, we got a lot of young guys in me. We've got unbelievable talent. You know, Pod. You know, all these kids are mo- moody. And just being able to, you know, hopefully I played this position as well, so being able to share some things there. But just, just understanding that it's a, it's a process, you know, it's not always given right away and, and being able to handle those highs and lows, I think I can I can speak to that. But just on the defensive side of the ball, just being able, I feel like this, this team won, you know, 46 games last year. Dre missed the, you know, ton of games. I just think with him back into the mix, um, hell, I may not even be here. <laughs> um, but, you know, obviously, you know, Kenny got a job. They were looking to, 
kind of shake the, shake things up a little bit, and I'm and I'm glad I got the call and, and have an opportunity to, to be able to help any way I can. And I don't feel like I'm limited to defense or offense. I've obviously I've been a head coach um, for for a while, so it's just just whatever you know. We're gonna have our coaches retreat, you know, in a week or two, and whatever assignment that that I get, I'm just gonna try to, to try to do my best in it to, to to help us get back to work, you know, to, to where everybody expects us and wants us to be. Yeah, uh, Stat, it is fun because like you're bringing up all the old school memories, yeah. and we're going down memory lane. The and ACC days. All man. we all oh, we think man. about is like the Warrior perspective. Because I'm gonna bring up something, and it might it might rub a little sore here. All right, so bear with me. All right. Don't you go there, man. Uh, Don't you, go you already there. know where you're going. We no, believe. Yeah. We, we already believe. <laughs> I've always heard it from the Warrior perspective. <laughs> Man, 67 wins. Oh, I, I know. Know. Oh, man. But like, I, I, I've heard Stack and Matt Barnes and Barron, and I've heard so many different people from the Warriors and Don Nelson for the Warriors. You were on the Maverick side of things, and I just think people forget how great that team was. <laughs> yeah. You had Dirk and Josh, and Josh Howard was a stud. You were coming off the bench for that team. What happened from your perspective in that series? Because before the championships, that felt like the championship for Warrior yeah. fans. Like that was, was the seminal the moment of being a Warrior fan for those that weren't alive in 75 when they won it all pre-Steph Curry. But give me the Maverick perspective because you were in the, in the deep of it. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it was just one of those one of those bad matchups. I mean, it was just a team that you know pretty much played with all wing players across the board. Um, you know, we, you know, the Eric Dampier was our center. He's kind of taken out of that. You know, played Dirk a lot at the five, and then they put, you know, they were switching, you know, Matt Barnes and and and, uh, and Stag, I mean, Stephen Jackson. You know, those guys were kind of getting up under him a little bit. And, and the thing about it was the kryptonite was really Nelly. You know, Nelly had been with Dirk his whole career, so he knew, you know, kind of, you know, his, his strengths and his weaknesses, and you know, he played right into it, make sure those guys crowded him and. Um, you know, again, they did, didn't. They stayed home a little bit. They didn't just double team a little bit, force them to make tough shots. And um, you know, again, it was just just a, a bad matchup. We thought we were. We had the year before the finals finals run, and then coming back and and winning six or seven games just just felt like we were destined to get back. And then we just ran into a bus. So I mean, obviously, Baron was was, was unbelievable and uh, and a, a load for us that that whole series. He just was able to get in the paint made plays for those guys and uh, one of the, you know, what, what a lot of people look at as one of the biggest upsets, but probably not because, I mean, they just did, they didn't have anything to lose. They played free, and we did have a lot to lose because of the success we had last year and all of the, the games that we won in the regular season. Do you remember Dirk throwing the trash can to put the big hole in the wall at Oracle? Uh, no, I was probably throwing something in the wall. <laughs> 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 he threw his trash can yeah. in the wall, and I think he ended up signing a shirt, the We Believe shirt, yeah. that was hanging up there at Oracle Arena right out that visiting locker room. Uh, but that was a wild series, man. Is that one of your biggest regrets? Because we're talking about the 49ers. Yeah, just, I don't know if you're a 49er yeah. fan. Is that when you look back at your NBA career? Because you had a great career. You made all-star great games, career. average 17 points a game. Hell, I always loved you at North Carolina. But like, like Shasky said, we wanted the Warriors to draft you, and you would go number three overall to the Sixers, but is that the biggest regret you had in your NBA career, that series right there, where you guys did win 67 games and had the number one seed? No, I mean, I, you know, I, again, like I said, it's just, there's things don't don't pan out the way that you want, but, you know, obviously, you know, I was I, I thought I should have been a number one pick, too, just to carry out. Hey, of all my Of all my NBA workouts, man, I, I killed this Golden State Warriors workout. I know I did. I was like, man, I'm going number one after this. But, <laughs> you know, but it, it worked out. But, no, it was uh, it definitely, yeah, I mean, I don't really, really have any regrets, man. It, it was tough. Yeah, and like, but, um, you know, and then the, the seed of them, you know, goes to that next round and obviously not do the same against Utah. I mean, mm -hmm. I was hoping for that they would win it on. They would catch fire and go all the way. But I think they left a lot, left it all in, in, in that series, mm -hmm. unfortunately for us. Now, Sassy, do you remember Sports Illustrated with Stack on it? I'll never forget Nick and Mel because you guys started coming on TV on the West Coast. I remember you guys played like Georgia Tech and you guys had the baby blue jerseys that Dick Vitale's like, oh, he's a super sophomore. Stack out to Rasheed Wallace. And I'm like, who are these guys? I'm a young kid. It's like, dude, these dudes can ball. That was and when the Sports ACC Illustrated. Was ACC was the loaded. ACC. I mean, Maryland, the Duke, ACC. Wake Forest, Come on. Georgia Tech. Come there was on. no easy games in that conference. And then that tournament was so sick. Like the ACC tournament, whether it's in Greece,
Greensboro, whatever it was. I live, we yeah. live for it out here on the West Coast. And the Sports Journal started came in the mail, and it was you on the cover, mm-hmm. and you were the Player of the Year. And I was like, the Warriors got to get that guy. Oh, yeah, I know you got that, man. You got that on the wall somewhere, right, Stack? Oh, no doubt, man. I got see those a lot with all of the you know the fans bringing <laughs> bringing those up to get signed and whatnot, man. It was definitely a, a lot of fun time. I mean, I had it, it all just kind of happens fast, man. I, I, you know, my earliest started probably going to the you know my hero was Michael Jordan, and he left after his junior year, so I thought there was no way I would you know leave anything you know before my junior year, and uh, my mom. Got, got sick. She had got diagnosed with cancer, and um, obviously everybody was saying that I would possibly be a top three pick. And I mean, I you know had that conversation with Coach Smith, and Coach Smith told me to. He basically told me to go. He's like, as long as I promised him that I would come back and finish my degree, and I did that. By I left in '95, and by ni- and by '99, um, I went back every summer and got my degree. That's the that's the downside of it. I was on bad teams, so we never were in playoffs. Mm-hmm. So I played the time to come back and finish it up. So. Um, <laughs> That's when you know they're a great coach. Not only are they teaching you all the X's and O's, they're still a mentor off the floor and somebody you look up to. I mean, that's 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 great. That's what it's all about. All right, you played on a lot of teams with a lot of characters. I mean, we referenced Rashid. I see all these guys on podcasts. I mean, I can't <laughs> believe Stack and Barnes are so right. popular with the podcast. Yeah. Like, if you'd have told me that 20 years ago, I'd be like, yeah, right. Like, they're going to be in the media. If you were to do a sit down with one guy who you think has the best stories, all right, of all the guys you played with, who would be the guy that you're selecting? Oh man, of all the guys that I played with, mm. oh man, could be a coach. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's got to be. A, that, that's a tough one. I mean, I actually played with with MJ and played with LeBron and played with them, but but I honestly still, man, did this. I enjoy listening to them. Uh, uh, KG and Paul Pierce. <laughs> I, I think that KG's you know, out of his mind. That kid, that kid, that kid uh, man, are good as well. I like all the smoke, but KG and I mean, he's he, he's 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 just hysterical to me, and and Paul as well. Those guys are some of the best storytellers that in the NBA. So I, I'm definitely probably getting on with those guys at some point for sure. Has, has Draymond invited you onto his podcast? Oh, that's right. I got Dan Drake got a podcast too. I'm pretty sure I'll probably catch that and get on that at some point too. <laughs> uh, but, but no, no, I'm just saying, I mean, man, I went and saw Dre a couple weeks ago in LA and uh, spent a little time with him in the gym, man, just, just getting to know him a little bit. I've already, we've always had a lot of respect from afar. He, you know, when I was in Detroit, he, you know, he was really close with Joe Dumar's son. He used to come up and, and whatnot, but, uh, but no, I just, being able to build that rapport, man. He's, I mean, he's the anchor of that defense, and that's where I'm hopefully going to spend a lot of time. And just wanted, to, just wanted to buy with him a little bit. So again, man, just great opportunity for for all of us, and yeah. hopefully, just we can we can hit, hit the ground running. I feel like we could talk for another hour because there's so many questions I want to ask man, you. Man, we hoops, man. Yeah, we talk to hoops, man. I, I, we love talking hoops on the show. We love not the not the narrative stuff, but I do got to ask because Sheed was one of my favorite players growing up. What was it like being teammates with Rasheed Wallace? I mean, this guy is yeah, out there, right? Technical fouls or whatnot. He was. Did you already? Did you always see that with them when you first? What was it like arriving on campus to Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and your teammate is Rasheed Wallace as a freshman? Tell us about Rasheed. Mm-hmm. Man, she was. Uh, I first off, I taught she how to drive. You know, he was uh, so that, like, no. he, he couldn't drive coming from Philly. So I had oh uh, my blaze, and then he was the first. I was like, man, get behind the wheel. He's driving with two feet. He got one foot on the gas and one on the brake. I'm like, oh hell, no, 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 no. He's gonna kill us all, right? Here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but no, he was uh, no. She was he was always fired. He's the best guy, man. He's the best teammate. I mean, he was always I mean voted. I mean, I guess the you know it. I think Michael Jordan carried the camera, so it was always voted amongst the upper class and then who would, you know, carry the camera. And she got the legend to carry the camera. He just had that, you know, greater rapport. But still, man, with the officials, when when, when, when the game got on and there was a bad call, man, he would absolutely lose it. I mean, even in practice. So it, it wasn't just anything personal against the, the, 
the officials in the NBA, he was, he was mad at Coach Guthridge. <laughs> so, so, so it was just, I think it was just one of those things, man. But, but he got better at it. I, mean, I think uh, him and Coach had some conversations and, uh, you know, some of those early morning weighted vest sessions helped, helped calm some of that down. But, but she was still going to be she, man. He's an unbelievable player, one of the best, yep. you know, power forwards I think the game has, has ever seen. And now he's, you know, he, he's sharing his opinion. I mean, not that I agree with all of them, but he, he's sharing his opinion. <laughs> He became that stretch yeah, four stack. He became that stretch four and stretch five. Yeah. That we see in in today's game. Era. I think he'd be even better. In oh, this he'd era. be great in today's I think game. He'd be awesome. Uh, uh, he'd yeah, be before, perennial. Perennial. Before you, before you get out of here on the current team, all right. If I took Steph off the board and I took Draymond off the board, who are you most excited to kind of work with on the Warriors team currently? Um, I, I, I like the young guys, man. I like uh, Kamiga. Um, I was able. To, I, I like. Uh, uh, Trace Trace Jackson, I saw him just getting better. I mean, he came out of nowhere last year. I thought he was unbelievable for uh, for the team as a rookie. Just watching film on him, I think he has a lot of potential to, you know, obviously he playing a five. But I, when I was saw him, I was like, man, you're not a five. You should you should think like you're a four. I mean, I think he could really sit down. I watched him sit down and guard point guards in, in the summer league and on switches and things like that. Really excited about him, Moses Moody. You know, again, when I saw him when I was in L.A. as well, it's just it's depth. You know, actually he was at, at, um, at Arkansas. And um, this thing to be, this, this, this young group, you know, because the things that he brings to the table, his toughness, you know, especially on the defensive side. I mean, you know, having a young guy like that lead the league and, and charges taken, man, just a lot of, a lot of promise. Um, with, with these guys, and then, and then with the vets that they added, adding you know Buddy and, and, and Ka, I was with Ka and um, and Memphis, and he just yeah. uh, he's just kind of a jack of all trades, a guy that you can plug into a lot of different positions, and you know hopefully you know Buddy has, has softened the blow of, of, of losing you know losing Clay, you know I mean Clay has been a, a staple here for a long time, and um, being able to provide some shooting, so man, it's across the board, and hopefully. I hit them all. I mean, Looney, all, all these guys, man, just having an opportunity to, to, to see them up close in person. I'm, I'm excited to get going. I think a lot of them are coming in town next week, and uh, we're, we're going to start start the build. Yeah, D'Anthony Belton as well, coming over from Philadelphia by way of Memphis. He's a tough guard who could defend his butt off, and he yeah, can shoot the yeah, three. And, about him, man. Yeah, man. Do a lot of things, man. They're probably, probably, I mean, and I miss him. I'm supposed to be in charge of defense, and that's the best defender. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and I did. And I didn't even mention him. So no, no. Again, a lot of lot of pieces that that I think that um, we we we've got got a chance to to put together and hopefully hopefully be special again. Nah, there's a lot to like with this team. Looney looks like he's in great shape as well. And coach, we can't wait to talk yeah. to you even more, man. Jerry Stackhouse is assistant coach of the Golden State Warriors. Like we're living, we're Shasky and I are 41 years old, so we remember your old playing days. Felt like we watched your entire career, and it's crazy Whole to career. see you as a coach now. Mm-hmm. But we're excited, man. We can't wait to see what you bring to the table, coach of these youngsters. We're excited about Kaminga. We're excited to see what they can do with Steph and Dre and get back into the playoffs. Coach, man, a lot of fun, man. Best of luck to you this season. Good to have you on our side. Appreciate you, fellas. Take care. Great stuff. Anytime. Jerry Stackhouse here on the River fun. Islands Guest Line, man. Jerry Stackhouse on the River Islands Guest Line. could have done five hours with him. I mean, unbelievable, right? Unfreaking believable Jerry Stackhouse, down assistant coach. Don't forget, folks, general public, it's your time to get tickets today. Also, um, the mini plans with the NBA Cup, Warriors single game tickets going on sale. Go to warriors.com slash mini, mini plans. Uh, warriors.com slash mini plans. You can get all that information. 